Iron Japan. Welcome in, football fans from the land of the rising sun. This is Gridiron Japan. Zach Kyleman in, as always, along with the dynamic duo that makes, well, the dynamic and very much uh, respected trio of Gridiron Japan. Uh, we got Greg James from CFL America Radio on one panel or another as I'm talking. And on the other, from Inside Sports Japan, we have John Gunning. Guys, welcome on in. Welcome aboard. Good to have us three back on again. I know, like I said, we have the time differences and you know things come up every once in a while, so you know, good to have us three on once more after uh, two after having uh, John having to step away last uh, last time for the last episode. But how are we doing? You know how what's uh what's new for all of you? Uh, well, I'm in D.C. right now, just on a mini vacation. So um, I am sitting here in a hotel room. Uh, my dogs are tired and uh, did a lot of walking down to <laughs> down here in D.C. So that's kind of the big thing for me. Okay. DC, you're in the Dentsu Caterpillars camp, are you? <laughs> that's, that's what they're called on the X League side, DC. Um, no, I'm in. Uh, I'm in, well, actually, I'm probably the closest one to Cat- Caterpillars. I'm still in Tokyo. Uh, time differences have been killing us and schedules. We almost didn't make it this time, thanks to not me forgetting completely that daytime savings actually exists. But uh, good to be back with you two gentlemen again, and looking forward to talking to some football. I got yeah. kids. Got kitted out this week, you know, wearing a <laughs> game worn Obic jersey. And yeah. uh, it's tight enough that it's definitely getting worn more now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's still, it was still looks sharp, not going to lie. I, I, I dig the look, look for this, John. And also, and, by the way, yeah, the bottom of the camera above stomach level, so it looks okay. <laughs> <laughs> just don't show the gut right? yeah, yeah, <laughs> the camera pointed up you know well since we're talking football stuff i'll throw my redskins hat on oh okay <laughs> the, the formerly known you mean yeah, yeah. Very daring daring risque move by you there Nick. it's uh you know it's one of those things that i found in the in the gift shop here at the hotel and i'm told my wife ago oh i gotta get it that's i gotta get it said that because on auction sites here since they since they did dump that name there's just been so much old gear from that team like just on sale online you can oh, yeah. for hundreds of yen which is basically a couple of bucks each you know game worn jerseys not game worn right. jerseys but jerseys hats everything yes cuz nobody wants it anymore so man i got a winter hat while i was at it on top of that too like the old kind we had as kids with the fuzzy ball on top <laughs> Well, that stuff's going to get ra- get rarer, though. You know, eh, hey, yeah, yeah. Relative. I mean, it's like you know, there's there's the thing. It's really cheap and easy to get, but you want to be walking around. And oh yeah, else. no way, hey. hey. No. <laughs> I feel you. That's, that's a whole different conversation. You yeah. Know? Oh my god. We, I mean, but you know, the, Japan has its own version of that. Jose University, one of the big, which is has their blue field out there in southern Tokyo. There. Um, connected to Boise stage. They got per- permission from Boise state to have the, the blue grass, uh, the blue artificial turf. They were called Tomahawks for years and years and years. Like their most of their history, they were Tomahawks and they changed uh, three, four years ago. I think they just changed to Jose university orange. So now they're just called uh, orange. You know, really? huh. orange. Yeah. Yeah. Which was uh, <laughs> like, they were kind of ahead of the curve, but it's not, I mean, obviously Native American imagery and symbols and stuff. The the question about that that's not a thing in Japan, obviously. Right. It's right. Like, you know, it's a US or North yeah. America specific question. But like whoever was in charge there just said, you know, obviously they were seeing some of the debate that was going on in North America and they decided to ditch the team name. There was nobody was ever I never saw anything here about people calling for them to do so because I mean they're they're a university team in a, in a minor sport. So, you know, very few people would actually be even aware that they exist. Right. Um, right. Yeah, no, they, they, did. they got ahead of the curve and they did t- ditched it. And uh, I love their new or- look is orange and they just have a H on the helmet now instead of the old hatchet. And, um, hmm. but they're like the very, very sharp uniforms now. Like they're, they're very, you know, their new look is very clean and cool. So, yeah. you know, so it's, you know, people, people are fine about it. Well, you know me, I'm all about uniform fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hey, 
Yeah, Greg, I, if there's one thing you've been doing lately, you're sharing all your retro pictures and everything on Twitter. So that's been bombarding. <laughs> you know, we, we're getting plenty of plenty of stuff on Unis from you. We've had that conversation before. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, I, I I wanted to I want to clarify one thing that me and Greg kind of didn't realize earlier on last show. Um, we didn't realize the X one area had it's week is section five had been split up into different dates. So to just as a correction for that last episode, um, we're going to be talking about the back half of that section five schedule that played out during our, the course of our last two weeks, along with X one super kind of the at least contests that have taken place to there, um, which actually let's get into that second portion of X one area section five, because as we were leading into the show, just kind of talking about points that we we're going to do, um, in terms of at least the promotion the talks right now and who's going to get there, uh, one of these contests, the Densu Caterpillars dropped a game against the Penta Ocean Pirates. Uh, oh, and Densu at this point, at least if you're talking about right now where they stand in the area, that was one that that is a heavy upset, if you're asking me, one that has a lot of implications for the last section coming up here soon for X1 area. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm just looking at the table here now. So all of the teams have played uh, five games and they're, it's a six game schedule. So you've got two teams automatically promoted already. You've got the two Asahi teams, basically. They're unbeaten mm-hmm. and they're facing each other in the final weekend of the season. The Asahi soft drink challengers down in, in Kansai and Asahi, Asahi Beer Silver Star up here in Tokyo. Um, there isn't really much at stake in their matchup there. They're five and zero, oh, both of them. So I guess pride maybe um, is the only thing really at stake there. Suns and the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Eagles. Then they're in joint second in terms of points, uh, four and one. But uh, so the top four teams go up automatically to the top division. So they're sitting on twelve points, three points for wins. So they're sitting on twelve points each. Uh, Densu, who you talked about earlier, face off against Sun. So if Suns beat Densu, which they would probably be favored to do, given how they've gone this year, that would put Suns up. Eagles have so there's there's something here, you know. There's this second tier; they don't all play each other, so the schedules are very very different. So um, the Police Eagles, uh, Tokyo Police Eagles, final game is against Nagoya Cyclones. And I'm just, let me just bring it up here. So all teams, their opponents have played 25 games, right? Right, right. So the Eagles have by far the softest schedule in the second tier this year. Their opponents have gone 10 and 15. The Cyclones have by far the hardest schedule. Their opponents have gone 19 and 6. So, so, you know... You would expect, prob- I mean, I think it'll be a close game because there isn't a huge amount between them. But if if the uh, the Fukuoka Suns win their game and if the Metropolitan Police Eagles win their game, that leaves Deers, <laughs> you know, the big powerhouse, <laughs> former powerhouse out in the cold. And primarily because, you know, the Eagles have just had like the softest possible schedule, almost the softest possible schedule. If right. they had, There's only one other game that could have been switched around. And if it was, that would have given them the the easiest schedule of the you know all of the teams at the bottom of the division probably. Right. Let's uh, and actually, you mentioned the Deers. Funny enough, let's have let's be joined in now. Uh, Ian Park is going to be joining us right now. Um, we were actually wondering if we had messed up the lesson learned. By the way, um, know that daylight savings time doesn't exist in Japan. So this was a fun little experiment this week going. Oh my God, the timings might not be matching up. Uh, he is currently joining us. We'll, we'll record, so you'll hear him shortly. We're kind of getting things together, but obviously, you know, as he's coming in, you know, his team's right in the thick of this. It's been they've had some tough competition the last few sections here. That has kind of you know they've they've hung in, but just haven't been able to sustain is all. So he just um, sent me a message yeah. as well. You're right. Yeah, he thought that we were start we were starting an hour later, which you know, yeah, Dave, yeah, I which. Say- Daylight savings has thrown us all off this week. But yeah, Ian, Ian will talk more. But so there is a thing then we don't know if um, the Eagles will actually accept promotion because being the, right. the police team, there's, there's a lot of things in Japan about how much money you have to pay 
as registration fees, you know, it, it goes up exponentially for each division you're in. So it costs right. a lot more to play the top division than it does in the second division. And, and do you want a team? I, I don't know how the team themselves feel because, you know, being comprised solely of police officers in the riot squad, they can suddenly get assigned to, you know, covering global meetings, right? conferences. And stuff. Right. So they're, the chances, I mean, they were fine this year. Last year, they had to cancel their entire season, but there's always the possibility that they may have to, you know, drop out of games. So it's, it, you know, I don't know if you want a team like that in, in the, the highest profile part of your... Right. Well, and they, and they actually, you know, speaking of that, in terms of, so like with a team like Metropolitan Police, hmm. with the money to stay in the league, where do those funds come from? Do those come... I know they're not coming from the the police themselves. How Do they... Do, well, no, do the players that, play dues or pay dues uh, yeah. or whatever? Well, here you can. You, you've just got somebody who can. Yeah. That. <laughs> so I think we. I think we got our things sorted out here. Oh, awesome! Um, or at least uh, should be. I think his mic might be muted. Muted. It looks like according. Oh, I'm here. There it there goes, go. Ian. Hey, hey Ian. first of all, let me let me just jump on and say I am so sorry. I did not realize that they do not have sa- daylight savings in Japan. So this is totally on me. I'm glad John gave me a reminder today. That that is a thing, and that we didn't just botch this any farther, or having to rush you in. So thank you for the adjustment on the fly. First off, yeah, no worries, no worries. I uh, yeah, I, I, I was like, okay, what time is eight? You know, <laughs> eight a.m. I knew you did that. I knew you did that. I only looked at the Japanese time, and then I I said to those guys, oh, I'll talk to you in three hours, and they're like, no, it's four hours. Like what? What? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> glad, glad to have you in, though, um, you know, and jumping on just for you, for your sake. You know, we're talking area right now uh, because I think right now, you know, at least in terms of uh, waiting to see how things play out for setting the top four in super, you know, your team and the Deers are kind of in the thick of things for promotion at this point. Yeah, it's it's not a good situation. Um, you know, we put ourselves in a in a tough, uh, tough deal. You know, I personally, I think we should have won that Silver Star game, um, mm. you know, but, you know, it is what it is. And, and so now we've got to look at numbers and strength of schedule and, and points scored and on all kinds of things like that. So it's it's kind of a headache. And uh, but unfortunately, it's it's what we have right at this, it's at this, at this moment. Um, so, yeah, I don't know wh- how it's going to play out. You know, I think we need any team with one loss to lose. Um, in order for us to, to have a chance. Uh, but you never know. They actually could just change its mind on the rules, and that's kind of how it goes here. Um, but, you know, but you know, thankfully we've played one of the hardest schedules, I think, with, uh, you know, Silver Star and uh, the Challengers and, and Densu. And, and so, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested to see how it's going to play out. But, you know, all I can control at this point is, you know, winning, winning our next game, so... It's kind of where I'm at. That's fair. Yeah, we were just talking about that strength of schedule. So, like, uh, the easiest schedule by far is the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Eagle. That's right. I mean, they <laughs> – I, I just – before you just came on there, I said – so they their opponents have gone 10 and 15, and Cyclones are stuck down at the bottom with 19 and 6, you know. Like, it, it's just – yeah, you guys are the same as, as both Asahi teams, and but like obviously losing to them didn't help. But yeah, I think you probably need Densu to beat Suns, which is going to be a tough one. Or you know, I, the two teams, the four teams ahead of you probably look like they're going to win and be ahead of you on points. But there's, I think that the possibility of Eagles not accepting promotion might be right. your, your best way into the top division at the moment. You know. Yeah, you know, those guys, they don't sleep. Um, they're just, they're always, you know, their shifts are, I don't even know, very late. I actually had the opportunity to meet some of them in the off season, And uh, I was, you know, obviously in the Shakaijin Football League, it's already difficult to play as a mm-hmm. Japanese player, but but they have it even more so, like, challenges. So, um, but they're they're all in very good shape and, and they work hard, so... Um, but yeah, I, I, that is a possibility, you know, them not accepting. Because in the past, I know like there have been some teams in the X two that have uh, like 
el- been eligible to to go up and be promoted, but they just declined. So that could be the case. I don't know. And even some teams have asked to be relegated because they couldn't afford the registration right. fees in the divisions yeah. that they've been in. So um, I think Bulls, Bulls a few years ago, maybe they, they had the right to stay in X1 area, but they asked to go down to X2 because, you know, uh, they didn't have enough players, I think, to pay the registration fees and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, plenty plenty of factors still at play, you know, so, you know, and the point I play for obviously Densu, you know, getting losing this past week for their for their section five matchup, you know, like, so that helps a little bit, you know, being upset by Penta ocean a bit, but, you know, still some factors got to play out there. I mean, you know, it, it's uh, I mean, I, I was besides just like some rough losses, like how's the season been for you guys? You know, it seems like, seems like, you know, you seems like for the most part, you know, the deers have played up to have played up and have been one of the top teams, at least competing wise this season, just, uh, you know, like John's talking tough, tough end of the, uh, year schedule that you have to go through that buzzsaw. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, we first game against Densu, we, we kind of, we could have very easily lost, could have very easily lost that game. Um, but we had that late, late comeback and then, you know, playing bulls, bullseyes and, and those teams, um, you know, as expected, I think. Um, but when it, I, I believe when it really mattered, we didn't get it done. Um, and I think, you know, we're, I thought like every week we're kind of, you know, trying to, you know, improve and, but, you know, when we, if we face a team like the challengers, you know, we just couldn't stop, uh, Garrett Saffron and, and a quarterback. And, and so, you know, but I mean, it's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed. You know, I, I wish I had some American buddies with me here on my team. Um, it would probably maybe help things. Um, but. Uh, you know, all of our, I mean, I don't even know at this point, but um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but, you know, we just, we have the, I looked at the uh, the numbers as far as like total points scored. We have more points scored than the Suns and Densu. So uh, combined. So uh, we have that going for us, <laughs> but it's your yeah, I mean, season, right? What, what'd you say? This is your third year playing in Japan, right? Yes, third year. Yeah. Yeah. So I really, you know, for a lot of us like who are just watching it from the outside as well, I'd love to see you playing. You've been you you came in. I think the years Deers just started in that second tier. So that's right. You know, there there are so the three big teams like Deers, Challengers, and Superstar. Obviously, they're all former champions, you know. And Deers right. before the modern you know, three-team era between Panasonic, Obik, and Fujitsu. Deers are the last team to win a title apart from those guys, you know. So Deers were a powerhouse right up to about 10 years ago. And uh, so, you know, it'd be really good to see you and them get back up to the top division again. I think there's a lot of people are really hoping, you know, see a resurgence. Yeah, it would be it'd be nice, but <laughs> I just think about, you know, it's going to be tough. You know, everyone, we're, everyone, you know, our, our motto is to get up to the, the X1 Super and I'm sure Challengers and, and Silver Star and Suns and Dentsu feel the same way, but it's going to be an old cakewalk. And once we get there, it's going to be, things are going to be much, much more difficult and to, to even stay up there, you know, in the, in the top 12. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. So, but it would be nice to, you know, I've been, I'm a history guy. I like to study mm-hmm. The, uh, the I was watching a, a YouTube video about the X League in like 2010, and there was uh, Brad Brennan was talking, and uh, Reggie from uh, Rise he was talking. So it's it's just cool to see who's come before you and and uh, learn about the history. But but yeah, it'd be nice to get back, and uh, we'll see what happens next year. But yeah, right, <laughs> right plenty plenty ahead. Greg, you I, correct me if I'm wrong. You had you had a player. You had a player related thing you were trying to ask as Ian was joining in, am I right? No, it was just, it was, uh, and I think I actually kind of had the answer to my question answered just in the course of conversation in terms of, you know, when it comes to money, dues, um, membership fees for the league, where does that come from? And then um, I think it was kind of, I think it was kind of answered. And it pretty much, if, it, and Ian, if, if I if think, if, think if I heard you right, it comes out of the pocket of the players. And yeah, in some cases, yes. 
um, as far as the deers go, um, they have to pay dues um, every year. I think the uh, how it works on our team is uh, the the veterans pay more and the rookies pay less. Um, and that, that was actually something that I was confused about when I arrived in 2019. They're like, Ian, you have to pay your dues. I was like, but you pay me. So why do I have to pay you? Now? It's kind of like being <laughs> in a union. If it sounds, if it sounds Extra steps. Right. <laughs> I was like, you pay me. Why do I have to? I, I was just like, I'm a professional player. I, I, I did. But this year they're like, no, you don't have to pay. Oh. Yeah. So it's I was actually- like, Okay. <laughs> Ian is in a really unique position because when he came in, it was Lixel Deers and it was Lixel was the, the sponsor and, you know, they had been around. Well, Deers, when they were a dominant team, were under Kajima, which is uh, a different company, you know, and then that company left and then Lixel came in and they changed the uniform and logos and they were all orange and white. And But you've been there under that, like, big sponsorship era and now switch to obviously Lixel pulled out and I think Deers now are just Deers football club without a main sponsor so I'm trying to think I can't think of off the top of my head I can't think of any player that's been in a team where it's changed like that uh gone from the big sponsor to just being a club team I know some have been there when it's gone the other way around but uh yeah. that's that's a kind of unique position so I mean the thing for a lot of people to be interested in what what have there been the the day-to-day changes because of that, or what are the, what are the most uh, impactful changes that have happened because of the big sponsor pulling out? Um, well, we don't have any Americans. It's just me. So that's a big okay. change for me personally. I know Lixil has been, you know, a traditional Jeff. Like we have, we like their, their kind of, and their motto or so they're like, mantra or something we're we're all Japanese you know we we're a strong Japanese team and and kind of um you know even now that there are have been Americans in in, on the team in the past four four years or so or three years or so um they still kind of believe that a little bit Mm -hmm. um and but I mean I don't know we used to get onigiri after practice we don't get that anymore (laughs) <laughs> um you know little things like that uh, we've actually been able to recruit more players to come play so i was kind of surprised really because uh, we fully anticipated i guess going up to the x1 super so we have enough players to field a team you know the requirement of you know maximum players a minimum minimum requirement of players um our jerseys i don't know if you if you've watched our games this year we've got are we only wear white with the orange numbers, but our helmets we've taken off of the uh, the orange antlers um, and replaced it with the new or the old new logo yeah. uh, from Ajma days. But yeah, for the most part, uh, nothing really noticeable. I mean, we're not like Fujitsu or Obik where we had a, a big facility and you know locker room and things like that. So, um, but kind of i guess the thing that i'm we're worried about is are, are we going to have a team next year you know do we have enough money because it's not it's expensive to play in the next one super so hopefully we we can uh you know be able to <laughs> be able to be able to, to pay those those fees so um but yeah i mean not not you know huge changes i'd say but yeah it's kind of it's so whatever at this point. <laughs> you're the only uh, you're the only American offensive lineman left in the league as well, right? Yeah, I you know there was one in 2019. Another guy on rise. Um, there, I guess we were the only two, but I actually did a lot of research. Um, and you know, in the you know going back ten, dating back ten years ago, maybe beyond, uh, there have been a lot, quite a few American offensive linemen in, in the league. And I'm kind of wondering where they all went, like, like <laughs> why? And I had to, I had to ask my, you know, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm just very interested in like who came before me. So I'm like, who are these guys? And, you know, where have they gone? And the only thing I can, you know, put it to is just the style of football has kind of changed um, over time. You know, as we, you know, used to be like ground and pound football, you know, I formation, you know, 
hard nosed stuff. And now it, like in Japan, at least most of most teams are running spread offenses and, you know, they don't, they're kind of, you know, relying on QBs and, and receivers and all kinds of stuff like that. The, the emphasis on the line play hasn't really been of, you know, they haven't really needed. So they say, I don't know. I've watched plenty of games where, you know, American quarterbacks getting sacked five times. I'm like, oh, they maybe they could use an offensive line. <laughs> maybe. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, I, think, I think once, uh, like, the likes of Kevin Kraft and, and Colby Cameron, once the big American quarterbacks came in and they had, like, the, the American receivers or star running backs. So, like, even Obik, they had an all-pro lineman, Kai Maeva, from, uh, I think he, oh, he's got, was it UCLA he played with? Or, right, uh, right. Um, USC. I don't know it's one of them, but he, he hated the other one, so I hope I don't get that wrong. Um, so he, he was Hawaiian anyway, but like he was he was a brilliant offensive lineman. He was all pro, uh, all league, you know, all X, all the rest. And they cut him to bring in tight end because it's like you said, they the you know, the emphasis shifted from the running game to like so all teams decided that really what we need are those four premium positions we needed in American if we have four Americans, we want them to be a quarterback, a running back, a quarterback, a wide receiver, an edge rusher, and a cornerback. You know, that's right. like get all the get all the skill like the pieces NFL filled out. out yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So they, I mean, I, I, I mean, obviously you want talent to those positions, but like you, I think, like, I mean, if you don't have a line, it's you know nothing works anyway. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? I've, I've kind of seen guys come in and out of the league in the past three years and at quarterback and their teams are still not performed well. I, I, I personally believe you need to build your Japanese talent um, without, if without that you bring nothing. It doesn't matter who you bring in from America. If you don't it's have four players, right? Yeah. And, and so, how is, in terms of that Japanese talent coming in, coming in through the league, how is it? Is it, is it improving? I mean, um, is the coaching at the college level improving too? Um, I, I think it has to do with the sort of globalization of football that we're seeing, you know, in the past couple of years here with the internet and the exposure, you know, you know, guys can see, at least in Japan or in Europe or whatever, or any of those places, they, they can have access to more access than they did in the past right. to, you know, watching this game in the States and, you know, being able to be exposed to that, whether it's so, you know, SNS, social media, things like that. Um, so there has been sort of a, and, and me personally, I think when I got here, and even when I got here three years ago, I, I believe like my own teammates and, you know, the competition we're facing has improved every single year. Um, with the, uh, but as far as to answer your question about college, yes, I, I think it's getting better. Um, you know, I'm, I'm coaching University of Tokyo and uh, right now this year. Oh. And, just it's cool to see, you know, those how those guys have gotten better over since March. So um, definitely, I think I don't know if the league, the X League, will become more popular when it, you know, like will grow. But I believe that there will be Japanese players that will, you know, be still be being able to challenge the CFL and and NFL and things like that in the future. So yeah, you you've had to have noticed. I mean. Obviously, on this show, we've talked about Yoshida Omi going over to the ELF, and you know we're talking right. about players going to the CFL. Obviously, those options are becoming greater as well. I mean, the the ELF alone. I mean, how do you view that league? Because that, I mean, between us three, we all have had our own opinion on that one, and I know that's kind of like another option. Uh, right. And it's it's an international in terms of like meeting in the middle. It's a place where you can say maybe Japanese ball. You can go there, like. Have you looked into it as much or talked to people about that yet? Yeah. Um, I talked a little bit to Michael Birdsong about it when he joined. Um, and I, my, my defensive coordinator from two years ago on the Deers, uh, Frank Roser, he just was named the head coach of the Cologne Centurions. Um, so I've been learning about it. Um, and sort of following along, I know a couple of players that were played that in the past season. Um, I've heard good things. I've heard bad things. I think they, th I think they certainly do a good job of, uh, promoting the league, uh, you know, as, and, you know, advertising and, and other things like that. I think they're, they're doing a fantastic job with that. But then you know, I've heard 
horror stories of, you know, trip players being mistreated, you know, with, you know, housing and injuries. And those are the, the, like, that kind of scares me a little bit because especially moving somewhere so quickly, you know, if I, if I went from Japan to Europe, like I don't know anybody, I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with the place. So, you know, it took me three years in Japan to find like good, you know, places where I could go and, you know, get, treat my body and, you know, take care of myself and make sure I was ready. So kind of, I'm, it kind of worries me a little bit hearing about that. Cause I'm, you know, I'm turning 28 and I'm getting older um, as far as football goes. Um, but I, I have reached out to the elf um, just because I'm curious, you know, my contract's over in nine days. Um, so, you know, I am, I'm always just testing the market to see what, what's out there, but, the theme is unfortunately, um, they don't want an American offensive line. So I've heard that before. Uh, <laughs> <obviously>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, they they want a quarterback or they want a whatever or you know. So same old story, um, but um, yeah. So <laughs> unfortunately, all the flash the players game. undervaluing the core. That ah, uh, that's yeah. see that. See that? That like we we're just talking about, you know, the change in philosophy. It seems like we're talking Japan recent years. It seemed I don't I don't like hearing that on other other stages too. You know, linemen are people too, folks. Let's keep that in mind. They're talented people. You know. Did you ever see that uh, that cartoon that was going around before the draft last year when they were like when the Bengals had the choice between Sewell or Jamar Chase? Like Jamar Chase has obviously worked out really well, but there was a cartoon showing like you know the quarterback, the offensive lineman, and the wide receiver. And if you have Burrow at quarterback, any like some random guy on the line, and then Jamar Chase, basically like Burrow's going to get killed so before he can throw <laughs> the ball. But then if you have like a really good offensive line, the wide receiver can be anyone because the quarterback has all day to throw to him anyway. So, exactly. You know, right. it's like, Ex- that's, you know, Fujitsu have been dominant uh, for the last decade, probably, you know, and most of that success was built on their offensive line. I mean, they were good in all kinds of areas. Like, they obviously, they're great quarterbacks and receivers. But, I mean, they had – when they were at their peak, they had nine of the ten best offensive linemen in the league. I mean, they were trotting out entire second units in the middle of the championship game and not missing a beat, you know. And it was just like whoever the running back was it just had, like, you know, Moses couldn't open, you know, gaps the way they did, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm of the opinion that, like, you know, first is the line. I mean, if you have a really good offensive line and you're you're giving quarterbacks time and wide receivers time, like you know, there's there's a limited amount of time that any you know secondary can cover anyone. So if the quarterback right. has time and space and can you know look at yeah. things calmly, you don't really need a brilliant quarterback. I mean, you know, so to right. me, it's everything, it, everything's on the line. Yeah, and analytics does actually analytics does bear that out with with a with a good solid line, you can plug and play, you know, even the most mediocre of receiver or running back by committee, and you're going to do well. So you hit, it, hit the nail on the head. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate. A lot of people, they just see the glamour and the glitz. They open the holes, man. And the, it, I, I, I almost, it almost sounds like how we're talking about this. Like, it's like, just find any big dude. He'll, he'll be able to move anyone. That's just it. We'll just, we'll teach him how to just run straight into their guy and pop him a few times. You know, the specialty guys will take care of the rest. And that's all yeah. that it sounds like. And I'm like, that's not how this works. Right. That's well, not, Zach, that, that's Zach, that, whatsoever. Zach, that's you works. and I talking yeah. is, uh, is, uh, that's you and I talking is, uh, high school lineman. And right. we know what it takes. Well, yeah, even I mean, hey, you can talk. Ian knows how to take. Yeah, <laughs> John that's, I was, that's what John I meant. Definitely. It's like teams put so much money into quarterbacks, and then they just leave them at the mercy of these massive animals on the defensive line, who are going to like tear them to pieces. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. you're going to invest so much money in this person, you should at least give uh, them some kind of protection. You know? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe they will. I don't know, at least in Japan, they will come to their senses, but I think it'll be too late because yeah. I will I will be too old at that point, maybe <laughs> uh, or so, but it's tough. But, but linemen pretty much play forever in terms of a career span. Most linemen, from my, at least, you know, play for a while. 
Yeah, um, switch to long snapper and you got another 20, 30 years. Yeah. Of doing, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> That that'll keep you that'll keep you on the field longer. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I, did you you guys didn't introduce him before on the show? No, I was, some people wondering who this guy. I, is. I've I've had him on Gridiron Gallery before uh, ah. to chat extensively. That's my Ian actually was the one that really truly got me my first experience into X League conversation and kind of giving me as much of a thorough rundown as possible. And then you know meeting up with Greg and then you John, it just was like all right now we'll just dive into this even farther you know (laughs) i got teased a bit and then just kind of met some more people some more friends along the way so gotta give ian so ian thank you for that (laughs) this this is funny because of our talk (laughs) several months prior so appreciate i'm sure there's a lot of people watching this who would like to know you know a little bit more about especially when when I was doing more stuff with football in Japan daily, like I think every single day I got two or three emails from players like, how do you come to Japan? How do you get to Japan? What's it like? You know, stuff like that. So I think the opportunity when you have somebody like Ian on who actually just who got here in a kind of unique way, um, different from a lot of players come here. I think it'd be good to kind of just go over that again. So, um, yeah, because you, you didn't come through contacts that you pre-existing, no, contacts, mm-hmm. which I think about 70 to 80 percent of players in Japan do. Um, yeah, even more now maybe but so yeah i think um i think i'm the only guy well the only guy who didn't message inside sport japan on instagram asking how to get to <laughs> I, probably yeah we were like who's this guy he hasn't he's hasn't got our approval I took it in, took it in um no so uh i knew about the league from my older brother uh he played football as well he was i think Somebody reached out to him uh, and they were interested, you know, football in Japan. And I think his teammate played for Panasonic um, in like 2013, 14-ish, around that time. What was um, the name of the teammate? Do you remember? His name was Matt O. Matt O. Matt linebacker, Panasonic from Dartmouth College. Um, so that was um, – yeah, so I knew about that league, and you know, I, I didn't know the details exactly. All I knew was you work for a company, and you play on the team, and gain business experience, and and you play football. So I said, oh, you know, when I was, I got a concussion with the Eagles, and and uh, I was on injury reserve in my hotel room with my laptop, and just waiting to be released by the team. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's when I kind of did my research, and. That's when I came across um, Inside Sports Japan and, you know, BJ, BD, you know, proposing to his wife after the game, uh, you know, cool, cool videos like that. And, you know, just watching Adi and on um, Fujitsu and just uh, and so what I did was I, I learned about the league and there's a limit to how many players each team can have. And and uh, so I went on the X League's website, translated the page because it was all in Japanese. Um, I looked at every single team. I found this team called the Lixel Deers um, with one player named Derek Bryant. Um, didn't message him. I just straight up tried to find a way to contact the team. And um, I just found their email, sent them a random email, and, and uh, they responded about a couple of days later and flew me out to Atlanta, met the head coach at the Kajima um, building there. And they're like, all right, come out to a visit in two weeks and then uh, had a good visit and they signed me so but we were yeah you were the first probably the, well i mean derek like you said was there but derek was just playing for deers the same as all the other japanese players he was just a guy working for a company in japan and, and he's yeah. a DC player i think in indianapolis maybe uh is where he played so he, he wasn't like an american import so but deers like you said they were the the team that never had american imports and then you were the the first one in their history really the first real one so yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. it, was, it was an experience. Um, and I brought a teammate of mine from Northwestern, uh, out Fred Wyatt on nice. D-line play. So that was a good time being reunited with Fred. Um, and then we also had a tight end slash receiver, Dakota Torres from University of Hawaii. Um, and then we also had another guy from Pacific University. It's a D3 school out in the West Coast, uh, Max Look. He's from Hawaii as well. Um, and yeah, we, that was our crew. And then Frank Roser, uh, a defensive coordinator. So that was a, it was a very unique, uh, crew of guys we had. 
Um, and it was so much fun. And hopefully I can bring more guys. I mean, we're recruiting right now, trying to figure out a way to get some more Americans on the team next year. Um, but you got, any, you got any Northwestern guys uh, on your list that you're trying to bring over? I'm asking yeah. only because I'm from Chicago's. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we're all we're all Bears fans on this podcast as well. So, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. I guess the Bears, they lost the Steelers, didn't they? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. We're talking about it. <laughs> they lost the Steelers and the refs. <laughs> John said, uh, "Not speaking the truth." That's, that <laughs> comment is going to get you a fifteen-yard penalty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like. I don't like the tone of your voice. I, I hope I'm not yard staring yard. at any of you on this screen yeah. in the wrong way. You're looking. I tell you. I tell you what. With, <laughs> without digressing too far, it was. It was kind of. It was fun listening to talk radio the next day. Oh, oh I bet. <laughs> I bet it was uh, yeah. 70 and one in ESPN 1000 probably were having a field day. Oh yeah. Well, you know what? And then you've got, uh, Ed Obradovich and, uh, Dan Hampton too, on top of that, losing their, <laughs> losing it. So I digress. Ian, uh, I know you hang out a lot more now with some of the other players on the other teams the last year or two, right? It's probably like challengers. Maybe you kind of got close to those guys or. Yeah. I, I hang out with, pretty much almost everybody now you know as i i'm alone now so i kind of well actually (laughs) 2020 you know jojo mathis from you know now on fujitsu and formerly fujitsu Mm -hmm. um frontiers he was my teammate so we got pretty close and then when he left i continued to hang out with him and uh and now like kind of our my little crew well i have several little crews little like (laughs) you know crews i run with now um, it's Paul Boyett, uh, and Jojo. We, we all, we're a little crew right there. And then, uh, Paul, Paul is from all Mitsubishi lions. He's alone as well, uh, doing his thing out there. And, uh, and then Tokyo gas, I'm pretty close with those guys. Um, and then the challengers. Yeah. I, I went out, we played, went out to Osaka, uh, and played, well, it was, I guess it was Kobe played the challengers, you know, stayed after and, 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 uh, spent some time with them. I love those guys, Mike Taylor and Bryson and Garrett and Rob and all those guys. So, um, and then I actually got a chance to meet, uh, Josh, Joshua Cox and, uh, Gabe from Panasonic had dinner with them after the game. Um, they actually came to our game. Um, so Gabe's another, he's, I guess if you want to call him, he's a dual citizen. Um, so, um, yeah, it's just nice to, you know, Meet another O line type guy. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I think it's one of the unique points, right, about football out here because it's like the country for because you're, um, almost all of you guys are Americans. There's, there's been one or two Australians, but basically ninety nine point nine percent of players who come here are American. So you're all coming from that football culture in the states, and then Japan is just so different from everything else in the states. So I, I it is. I think it's different from anywhere in Europe, like where you don't have that kind of. Players on one team, I know you have a lot more Americans on one team in Europe, so they tend, but they tend to like stick together. I don't think you have the thing where you have in Japan where there's an awful lot of intermingling between players from different teams. The Japanese guys have it because there's college football here, and a lot of right. them went to school together, so they're friends with lots of guys on different teams. And then all you American guys, not everyone, obviously, you know, some people can't stand each other's, but, you know, for it overall and in general... It is one thing I think that's unique about football here is the way that players on different teams socialize so much, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. We're, we're always, you know, we sort of have the same schedules. Um, and so it kind of works out, you know, every, usually everybody's off Monday just because we had the weekend practice. And, and so, um, yeah, I'm kind of just find ways to, you know, and for me and Paul, you know, we like to eat a lot of food, so um, it's definitely we have a, that in common. <laughs> so we're always looking. Well, it's, for it's a, bonding. It's, it's you guys are bonding. I mean, that's that's that's. I mean, I, I imagine just having those guys, you know, nearby to hang out with helps you get through a lot of things there. Being so far from home, right, right, right. Um, yeah, it's just nice to you know learn about people and, you know, talk about, I, I'm always interested to hear what goes on on other teams. Um, and, you know, I hear, you know, griping from, you know, all the, every, all, every guy, you know, 
<laughs> oh, this, this, that. I'm like, man, at least you have a sponsor, you know, at least you guys, <laughs> at least you guys know what's, you know, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of funny how, how uh, they're like, oh, really? Like, I didn't know. Blah, blah, blah. Paul, actually, after two years of waiting to play a game, he finally got to play his first game in Japan when the Lions get back and then they lost 70 <laughs> 0. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> There's he, a lot he, of emotions there, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, he was like, yeah, you know, we'll be okay. I'm like, Paul, oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they'll be okay. He was turned around a similar thing earlier in the season, so you never know. Yeah, I don't know. They got they have Tokyo Gas this weekend, right? That'll be uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. But yeah, I mean, it, he was excited to get out there, and finally, after two years, he was able to do that. So I was happy for him, and uh, yeah, good stuff. Hopefully, hopefully the Lions be able to get it going here. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, let, let's let, as we're as we're breaking down here for the show, let, let's let's get into our pick segment because we always do the x1 super and you know we we did we had some picks with when we had bj on so we'll ian will have you get your takes in here as well um for at least the super here (laughs) just hey whatever comes to mind obviously i know uh, we'll tell you what we'll we'll start out with uh we'll (laughs) we'll start out with the lions matchup for section six here as they will be taking on tokyo gas as we're just talking about so um we've talked on the show the gas or the tokyo gas have been kind of a surprise at times this season, you know, uh, still we're kind of in the thick of things for the playoffs right now. And well, Mitsubishi, all Mitsubishi's trying to figure stuff out and at least end the year, hopefully on a high note. So um, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll go here. We'll do Greg, John, and then Ian. I'll just kind of wrap up myself and then tr- segue into each one. So Greg, what are, you, what are you looking at here? Obviously we just said that all Mitsubishi's trying to maybe recuperate a little bit, you know, 70 nothing, First, uh, welcome back <laughs> that IBN gave them. So now you got to go take I'll, on the creek. I'll go Tokyo Gas 20, Mitsubishi 3. Hmm. Okay. 20 to 3. Well. <laughs> Get the field goal in, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought about the picks at all. Yeah, I completely forgot about it. I'm surprised all you right uh, now. So uh, <laughs> I'm not no. gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. I won't say anything yet. <laughs> yeah, you better not. Yeah. You don't want to end some friendships. You're you're getting on well with Paul. You don't want to end it straight away, you know. Off the field friends, you know. Off the field friends. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, uh, I, it's hard. It's important. All Mitsubishi. Who knows? I mean, you know, that was their first game since 2019, and they're up against Big Blue, and they got shellacked. But then again, you know, you saw the same thing. Tokyo Gas got beaten by 70. What was it? 71 three or something? Yeah. Game this season, and they're you know yeah they bounce back. They're arguably like the fifth best team in in the division now. So yeah, it's an interesting one. I think I picked Tokyo Gas. I think I. Well, it's it's score wise. Who knows? But Tokyo Gas are. I'm trying to even see what Tokyo Gas have put up the last few weeks, but uh, Not, uh, they didn't score. They didn't score against uh, Rise. They had the Sean Draper had that kickoff return touchdown. Yeah, mm-hmm. Rise. Yeah. They have offense hasn't scored since uh, the Finney's game, Elecom. So, yeah, I think Rise are clearly the number four team. That's like, I mean, even when they were unbeaten, I still thought that they were going to meet the team that were going to make the or when they hadn't won a single game when they lost like right. the first three i still thought they were the the fourth best team so uh i don't know i give them i yeah they're not they're not but you know they have they seem to be like those they have those the american receiver and quarterback and uh what did you say greg what was your score? i said 20 to 3 i figured at least get them a field goal okay so i'll go 31 10 as an explosion okay. for, for Tokyo Gas, you know, and Rise will start getting things, uh, Lions will start getting things together. Usually Lions have been the better, the, historically between those two of those, Lions have been the better team. So, right. but looking at the lineups now and stuff like that, mm, I don't know. Yeah, 31-10, hmm. Tokyo Gas. Solid. Well, I've been seeing Ian's reactions this entire time, so like I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Any tidbits you want to want to give us on this matchup? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, no, I was just thinking about the people I know involved. Um, I, I think it's it's unfair to ask him to make predictions. You know, he has he has yeah. only a few friends in Japan. You don't want to end those friendships. That's right. right. Hey, you tell you what, have... you you can pass if you want. I, I mean, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying, or even just call I, for a tie. I know. <laughs> I, I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. That would screw up the. Uh, the, the the playoff the fourth playoff spot or whatever or you know in ca- I think about I don't want to tie because in, in the area in the case of the X one area oh yeah that's true is, I don't want any ties I don't know why we're doing ties this season where is overtime I don't know what happened to overtime. that's right I forgot about that they took uh, away IBM it. would be asking the same thing probably same for Ellicott yeah. <laughs> that they could yeah so that kind of I don't want to tie don't want to tie Tokyo Gas and the Lions Tokyo Gas will win the game. Um, as far as points, well, like John said, they're, they're typically, you know, Lions have been typically stronger in that matchup. I think back to 2019 when they last played, um, it was very, very close, maybe a touchdown difference. Um, but Gerard Evans at QB for, for, for Tokyo gas. Now, I think it's going to be 40 to Zero. Wow. Mm. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. I'm actually going to put two touchdowns here for Mitsubishi. I'll be a little, I'll be more positive on this. However, I still think that Tokyo Gas. You know, it's hard for me to look past Gerard Evans being. You know, how much of a force he's been. I know that Noj- Nojima looks like the dot, like the definitive fourth seed right now. But I'm I'm going to say that I'm going to say that Mitsubishi looks definitely better than they did last week. You know, first week back after well over a year absence i mean that's that in itself you know you got to put some accreditation on that so i'm going to say that i'm going to say you're going to see a closer game 21 14 i'll I'll call it that one possession game creators walk away with it here three more games on the docket elecom and obic is going to be the next one here i'm going to save the two uh more crucial or top tier games for last for folks that are following along um you know elecom is the rougher back half schedule um obic well you know top three in the x1 super right now greg what are we looking at oh you know me i never bet against bj so i'll go obic 27 i'll go uh elecom 14 Uh, i made that mistake already this year so learn my lesson (laughs) oh don't get (laughs) right already made that mistake (laughs) (laughs) what's your what's your score john yeah elecom is a nice match. BJ actually, I think BJ had six sacks against Elecom a couple of years ago. If you talk about BJ against Elecom, um, yeah, so Elecom, Fujitsu, Panasonic, they're already the three of them are into the semifinals. So, uh, Elecom, Elecom have a slight chance, but they need to beat what is it? Who, who do they have in the last week? They need they need to beat Obic this week and then they need to beat Panasonic. Yeah, Panasonic. So, yeah. so, so you know, more or less eliminated. Um, I think they will be eliminated, obviously, this week. I think Obik will win uh, 27-7. I think that's how it will go. Okay. 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 Well, you know, I think I think Obik's D-line is going to cause problems uh, for the Finies. And I think the Finies D line might cause problems for Obic. Um, they've got a good pass rusher. They've got good pass rushers on, on both sides. Um, so I think it's going to be a little bit of a low scoring affair, you know, as we've seen, you know, I don't know if Holden will be playing a tight end for Obic this week. Um, and so I'm going to take 21 Obic. Seven finals. Hmm. Okay. Did you see how he how he low key apply low key applied for a job there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. both, both T lines are going to cause problems. So, you know, both teams are in need of offensive line help. <laughs> True. I, 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 I like that. I like that. That's Subtle weird. hints. Subtle. I talk to people every week, and you know, Karamatsu from from Tokyo University. He's on the Seagulls now. I said, hey, like. We're, we're having some trouble this year with pass protection. I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> you know a guy. 
<laughs> I know a guy. I'm going to help you. Want me to pass along the tape? <laughs> I'll just come. I'll come. My season ends next week. I can come practice and help you guys prepare for the playoffs. You know, nine nine days All contract. Right. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, nine, so, <laughs> yeah. free agent. Free hey, start start advertising yourself. You know, uh, I'm 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 going Obic with this one as well. By the way, uh, twenty to thirteen though and that's going to be that's going to be just based on uh you know like we're talking defensively they do they're able to hang in tough you know fujitsu you know was one possession game you know it was pretty pretty tight for that contest i think you can get similar deal you know it's going to be kind of a kind of basically grind throughout the game you know just whoever's able to scrape enough you know at least enough enough solid uh i would say streaky plays that's what you're going to have it come down to so I got Obik in this one, but Elcom is not going to go down without a fight. That's why I'll say it. And that brings us to our final two matchups of the section six. So we'll look at first off the one that has some bigger implications for standings right now. So Nojima is going to be taking on IBM. Uh, as we've talked on this show, IBM's had some slip, has some slip ups. They had the tie against Elcom, which has actually been pretty crucial to their points this year. Um, makes you it kind of is one of those things you look back and makes you wonder. Nojima last week kind of came out and said, Hey, I'm playing good defense to start our you know really hard front half of the schedule, and now we're showing that you know we weren't slouch, we weren't we're the real deal, you know, we've come to play and that you know we belong in there. So, this could be a crucial make or break game for IBM and for who might be able to possibly lock up the top four. Uh, Greg, what are you looking at for this one? I think I'm gonna go IBM. Maybe 28 to 27. So IBM went in the game, but barely. Yeah, this one is the, this one is essentially the decider, I think, for the fourth playoff spot. You know, the big three have theirs locked up. If I, if this is essentially in a way a playoff game. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So if Nojima win, they're basically in. Um, IBM, if they win, they still have to beat Tokyo Gas probably next week as well, which you probably well, the, because you know Nojima have Lions in the last week, so which is theoretically an easier game. But uh, this is the one, really. So it's so close between the two of these for a long time. But uh, I don't know. I just I like Nojima this year. I've liked them since the start of the year. You know, um, they beat all these teams last year, all the ones, the lower ones, and I think you know. I, IBM, I don't know, they're up and down. I mean, they had that big, big win last week, but just, I don't know, they just looked, something's looked a little bit off at times, you know. They just haven't clicked. So I go 24-21, Nojima. I think Nojima will sneak out the win here and, and make that fourth playoff spot. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was at the Rise Tokyo Gas game uh, last two weeks ago, I think it was. I was very impressed with Rise. Um, Just, you know, they've got they've got some good. Obviously, I think their quarterback is really good, Kurt. Um, He's I don't know. He runs a very very fast forty. He's he's as a speed that's a speed guy. He can also throw. Um, And so I think it's going to be sort of a high scoring affair because you know IBM's got that they throw a lot, Um, but I think Rise will win. because so I'm looking at, and one thing I remember is uh, Rise and Panasonic when they played. That was a close game, right? That was almost mm-hmm. Rise almost pulled that one out. And I look at IBM and Panasonic, and that was not a close affair whatsoever. Um, so that's kind of like what I'm going off of, as well as you know what I've seen in person. Um, I think it's going to be Rise forty, um, IBM twenty. Yeah. One. So. <laughs> yeah, that, and on the little extra, you know. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> you know, <laughs> adding a little bit more. I'll t- I'll tell you what. I my my whole thing with IBM ever since I made that ever since I made the assumption that they were going to take on and upset Obic. Um, this is what I've noticed. They're it's very much a mistake prone team. It is a uh, kind of turnover heavy. It's a little concerning. Um. You know, ever since ever since they tied with Elacom, it's just kind of felt like that they sometimes can't get out of their own way, and it just exemplifies some of the issues they have with facing higher higher tier opponents. And Nojima defensively 
as we just talked about with them playing Panasonic, they're stout. You know, they are defensively, they are. that is their bread and butter. Um, that is what's keeping them, you know, in competition right now, what can give them a leverage to upset any of these top three teams. So I just, to me, that's what's going to be, what's going to knock IBM out of the playoff race and what will essentially lock up the playoffs, a section or well, several weeks early, if you ask me, um, I don't think it gets complicated. So I'm going to say no Jama, uh, give it to me 31, 21. Um, okay. you'll see maybe a crucial interception or fumble that'll, cause it to flip to where Nojima can jump out, get a two possession lead and kind of lock it up in the fourth quarter. But that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Keep an eye out for Lee Hightower at safety and corner for a DB for, for rise. He's been playing some good football. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been noticed the last yeah. couple of. You get, yeah, yeah. Hey, good, good eye. You know, I, 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 I like. <laughs> All right. Last game on the docket. I know we I know we're pressing for time, time here for some of us here um, as we're looking at it. The big one on this slate as the back half of this whole schedule this year, you're starting to get the big the big three having their games that are kind of these uh, really kind of put up your dukes and, you know, let's go and brawl, duke it out, make, have the best possible football on the field. Panasonic taking on Fujitsu. So last week, Pan. Last week we had Panasonic taking on Obik, one possession contest, thirteen to six. Fujitsu escapes from Elecom with an eight point win, and well, here we are. And we we know the imp- we know the impulse are explosive on both phases. We know Fujitsu at times has definitely shown that they can put. I mean, they, for the most part, they put complete games together. But you know, they there's been a few games like, for example, against Tokyo Gas, where it's like. Maybe they let off the gas, no pun intended, (laughs) you know, so just saying could be, could be, obviously it's going to be interesting because it's a big three matchup, but you know, wonder how close it could actually be. Greg, what are you looking at for this? I'm looking at Panasonic 14 to seven. One possession then. All right. See, I could see it. Best of Fujitsu comes out. John, what do you got for this one here? Top three opponents going at each other. So if Panasonic win this, they're basically into the rice bowl because mm-hmm. they're going to that's going to seal the top spot for them and they're going to beat whoever the fourth place team is, whether it's Nojima or IBM. Um, and that's going to put Obik and Fujitsu up against each other in the other semifinals. So, I mean, it, there isn't a lot at stake in terms of making the playoffs, but there's a huge amount at stake in terms of who your playoff opponent is going to be. So Panas- Fujitsu obviously desperately want to win this, as do Panasonic. But I just, yeah, I feel this year Panasonic have something. I mean, they haven't beaten Fujitsu since 2017. Um, like over the last, I think Inside Sport Japan put up the graphics. So it's been seven wins to three over the last 10 years. But it's always been, it's nearly always been close. The big three, you can't, you know, they're very tight bottles. But I just, I like Panasonic this year. Panasonic, I'm going to pick them to win this. I hate picking against Fujitsu. I always hate picking against Fujitsu because you can just see them sitting there laughing to themselves, like rubbing their hands, like, <laughs> you know, and just like sticking this up on, on the dress. And, like, you know, I, I claim that, you know, we, we've earned at least a couple of their championship rings just by the amount of motivational material we've provided. <laughs> over the years. But um, I'm, I'm doing it again. I'm going to pick Panasonic for this one. Uh, just that, that horrible, horrible way that they lost the Japan Expo a couple of years ago on the last ah. play, you know. I think they're just desperately waiting to uh, to play this. And um, wasn't it that the semifinal last year as well? Wasn't that the fumble on the goal line? Was that against yeah. Fujitsu? Well, yeah, was it Obik? Yeah. 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 Oh, that was Obik one, yeah. But I think, you know, they're, they're just, um, yeah. But I, I think a little bit more of a score. What did you say, Greg, was score? At 14 to 7. 14 to 7. Panasonic rarely score a lot against Fujitsu, but I think this time they'll get to 21, and I think their defense will hold Fujitsu to 20 points. So a one point win for Panasonic. Ooh. Nice and close, real good going down to the wire. I like the predictions here. I like them. What we got, Ian? This is tough. This is a tough one. <laughs> I. I talked to all people from all sides. Both teams are very worried about each other this year, obviously, yeah. as they should, you know, lots on, on the line here. Understandable. Oh, man. Jeez. <laughs> but I, I'm leaning Panasonic. Just be, I don't know. It just seems like this is their year. 
It's what it feels like to me. Um, but this game's going to be very, very close. Um, I think it comes down to a field goal. Somebody, you know, it's going to be a field goal difference. Um, I'll be watching. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, we'll be watching. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. The tickets are sold out to the game, so I'll just watch on the uh, the old stream. But, um, but yeah, I think, actually, do I have practice at that time? Is it an 11 a.m. game? 2 p.m. Anyway, uh, I'm just thinking of the schedule. But I'm taking Panasonic 24, Fujitsu 21. Ooh. And to wrap things up, I actually am going to make it a clean sweeper Panasonic, but it's going to be it's going to be competitive. I mean, as as he, I mean, Ian's bringing the insight directly for us here. You know, I imagine all I imagine you know, when you when you're on Panasonic Fujitsu or Obic, you know when you have your teams with a reputation and you're taking on the best of the best, you know, you have to be on your edge even more so than any chance. You can't have slip ups. You know, you can't have like a pants like taking on Nojima and you have to rely on 17 points in the fourth quarter to rally the troops to get through. You have to be on your a game the entire time. Um, I just think that Panasonic's more well-rounded. I think that they've been able to say that, you know, they don't have, they haven't really looked to me like they've let off the gas at any point this year, except against Nojima and that was for roughly two and a half quarters. So um, give me Panasonic over Fujitsu, uh, 28 to 20. It'll still be one possession. I'll, I'll give you that. But you're going to, they'll see him, you'll see him close it out in the fourth quarter. Um, probably, probably either uh, some of the, you know, last minute breakthrough at the goal line or, you know, maybe uh, laps in coverage. Uh, that's what I'm predicting. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. G- gentlemen, thanks for joining up. You know, really appreciate that we're got we got four people on here with these time zones and the crazy t- daylight savings time crap that I'm throwing on to make it even more insane. So, thank you guys for making this work because, yeah, this week was kind of nuts to get this together. As I'm talking to all of you, even listening here, really, I can't appreciate it. And Ian, thanks for adjusting on the fly. As Don't well. worry, it's all good. <laughs> Nice meeting you, Ian. Nice to meet you too, Greg. Nice. For, for, pick, for my... up Ian. pick up Ian, one of the big teams. You need him. You should. Yeah. Uh, on, the, on that uh, Panasonic Fujitsu uh, matchup real quick, uh, Jab- Jabori Williams, is that his name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, yeah I heard last night I talked to an Obic player. He's caused, he caused a lot of problems. He might cause some more problems this weekend. We'll see. This is what you need, guys. <laughs> Dude's a mauler, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Come on. I want bring back power football. That's what I want. Bring it back. T formation. Focus on the big guys. <laughs> Veterans Day as well. Um, back in, I think it's still still Veterans Day in the States. Yeah. 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 Well, as we're still, talking, yeah it's still Veterans Day. Or... <laughs> so we're yeah. talking right now. That's right. Yep. Yeah. I uh, got to see my old college teammate last night. He, he was in Okinawa and he's doing some training in, at Fuji. And so he had the weekend off. So I was able oh, to wow. see him. Cool. Oh, that was pretty cool. He's in the, the army, so pretty awesome. Yeah, that that's wow. That's actually that is really fascinating. There, you know, nice to have that connection in a way, in you know, way that we're talking. But yeah, you know, at least in the states, you know, Happy Veterans Day for everybody out there. Um, at least as it's wrapping up on our end, you know. Um, for and thanks again, guys, and for my buddies Greg James for John Gunning special guest you know ian park coming on here as well i'm zach kyleman saying so long thank you for listening into this show uh catch us on facebook instagram and twitter yes we are going to have those three uh it's not just twitter anymore so you can catch us at gridiron japan for that and following us along as we continue to build the show and, and don't gonna... forget our website for the, the, the youtube channel mm-hmm. and for the podcast that's so right we, we have grid I'll let you go. I'll let, okay, you, I'll I, let you say it. <laughs> Greg's I, I, just reminding I, 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 me. That's all it is. <laughs> be, be sure to follow us at Great Iron Japan Television on YouTube and then Great Iron Japan TV.net. Is that right, Greg? You got it. Oh, I, and then I suck it in. Great Iron Japan Radio.net, too. Fantastic. See you later, everybody. We'll catch you in a few weeks talking as we gear up for the postseason in X1 Super. And we'll talk about promotion. And who's going to be the big four, supposedly make it in. We hope it's Ian that, that might have that chance, too. So we're rooting for you, buddy. <laughs> oh, thank you. I need all the all the prayers and the, uh, the voodoo and everything you got. So appreciate it. <laughs> See you, <ya>, everyone. <laughs>